Peter Akeem joins me now. He's the President Emeritus and Senior Fellow of the Inter-American Dialogue. Are you surprised that these demonstrations have lasted as long as they have? And do you have any idea that there would be this type of reaction in Ecuador? No, th this was really a surprise in many respects. Uh, we, maybe we should have predicted it. Uh, we saw in many other countries a sharp rise in the price of fuel. Uh, even a small rise in the price of fuel in Brazil led to massive demonstrations. It's happened in Argentina. It's created problems. Uh, it's very, uh, and uh, I mean, I think the IMF should have been more aware that the uh, price of fuel is, is, is a very touchy subject. And uh, the truckers and taxi drivers can you know, do an extraordinary amount of damage <laughs> when they go on strike. And they're the first ones to strike. And then, in Ecuador, it seemed like there were a lot of other people ready to go out on the streets. In other words, that it wasn't simply, you know, this was, they were all going about their business and this was some spontaneous movement that, but they, you know, the indigenous groups seemed to be really ready to put their people on the streets. They were unhappy with the government. Breaking into buildings, yeah. uh, the president had to, had to move the government uh, to Guayaquil. The government says, though, that these austerity measures were necessary if they weren't done. Uh, they, they were already in deep debt. Um, so was this really a shock to the people of Ecuador? I mean, they're saying this goes back decades to uh, Rafael Correa. Well, I mean, <laughs> uh, let me say that uh, the, the, uh, the International Monetary Fund went along with Argentina's gradual adjustment. They had a lot, a long way to go, and they were going to slowly, and this caused the crisis in Argentina, and then the IMF came in, and Argentina also had to raise its fuel prices and all. So the gradual, which was supposed to protect the economic reforms from political uh, rebellion, uh, didn't work in Argentina. So the IMF came in and told the Ecuadorians they had to move quickly. They couldn't wait any longer. The situation was becoming desperate, and this generated a political uh, havoc in, 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 in Ecuador, a political resistance that's huge. And, uh, you know, and, and another factor, of course, is that the economy of Ecuador was sinking was not doing well. They had overborrowed, overspent. The price of oil, one of their major exports, had fallen very steeply. And I think people, there was a lot of unemployed. There were a lot of people partially employed. They were basically, it's an unhappy population, and it's always been a country that's difficult to govern. So Moreno is uh, saying that he's not going to resign. These people are so right. mad. They're asking for him to step down, but he seems to have the backing of the military. How important is that? And at what point do you see any change in leadership, if at all? Well, I mean, I think the military is very important. Uh, you know, when uh, Ecuador has uh, had a history of street demonstrations and street politics, where I think that uh, demonstrations like this forced out three former presidents. Uh, and uh, I don't think that uh, you know, Ecuador doesn't have the firm, solid democratic institutions. And so the military does play more of a role there than it might in, in, in many other Latin American countries. And the fact is that the protesters are showing their political strength by going out on the street and showing they can show themselves and stand up and be out there for, you know, a, a, a long period. So, I mean, this is an Ecuadorian political battle, uh, battle royal, uh, triggered by an economic uh, downturn and a government trying to regain uh, some measure of, of uh, economic stability. We'll just have to see what happens. Peter Green, right. thank you so much. We appreciate it. It's a it. pleasure. Thank you.